All right, so iron is a very key nutrient in the body. It is very important for it to be in optimal ranges. And I want to talk about what you can do when your ferritin is very, very low. Um, ferritin is a marker of iron storage. And for a lot of women, their ferritin levels can be exceptionally low. Um, a normal range for a lot of doctors can be anywhere from like 9 to 300. Some are 19 to 300 for these normal ranges. But we have to remember that normal isn't optimal. We want optimal. And for a woman, optimal ranges of ferritin is between 70 and 90. And when we're looking at the entire iron panel, we're looking at iron serum, we're looking at total iron binding capacity, we're looking at the percent saturation and the ferritin, which is the stored iron. We're going to focus mostly on just two markers today. I don't want to get too science heavy, um, but a lot of times we'll see women with very low iron levels, very low ferritin levels. Oftentimes uh, women will come to me or I'll see them in different groups or um, forums where their iron is nine or five, not their iron, their ferritin is nine or five. And anytime when I'm working with somebody, if their iron goes under nine, I will definitely refer them to get an iron sucrose shot. Now, iron sucrose is going to be the safest form to get as an injection. Some of the other ones that doctors offer can come with a lot of side effects. They're quite toxic. We want to avoid those. But when the ferritin gets that low, they're often going to have uh, symptoms of anemia. We can also see anemia present on their complete blood count. So their RBC is low, their hemoglobin is low, and iron is needed to transport oxygen. So it's very important. Um, a lot of people who are focusing on candida will be like, oh my gosh, I can't take iron because it's going to feed candida. We don't starve our body of nutrients to try to kill candida. It doesn't work. Check out my root causes of candida video and why you can't starve candida video. I don't really want to go into candida on this video. But when your iron is that low, you do really want to think about getting an iron sucrose shot. Now, oftentimes what can happen is the body's iron levels are fine. The iron serum levels are fine and the ferritin is low. And... What's happening here is that the body is getting enough iron in the diet, but it's not storing it. And we have to think about iron as an oxidant. It, uh, you know, out in the environment would rust. And so it oxidizes in the body and it causes inflammation. So if the body is unable to handle that, it is not going to store the iron. So when we see high iron serum and low ferritin, that is a different ballgame. You can't just start taking iron. You don't want to just go and grab an iron sucrose shot because you're going to be doing more harm than good. Your body is saying, no, thank you. Can't handle this iron. And you're like, hey, have some regardless in really high amounts. So what we want to do in this case is we need to get antioxidants up and we need to focus on our detoxification pathways and our, nut, our other nutrient imbalances because all of these nutrients, all of these minerals, all of our vitamins, they work together. It's not just raising iron. It's not taking a bunch of iron. We need to work on the body as a whole. We need to work on these other nutrient deficiencies and we need to repair our detox pathways, in particular methylation. Methylation plays a big role, and that's not just MTHFR. You need to see your entire methylation panel. You need to run your genetics and see where those mutations are and what support you need, what forms of nutrients do you need so that your body can start taking on the iron and storing it safely. So you want to make sure that you're not just focusing on the iron. Now, another pattern that we see with iron uh, is that the iron serum is low and the ferritin becomes very high. And it's the importance of getting a whole panel and getting proper labs, because if you're just looking at your iron serum, you're not getting a whole picture. If you're just looking at your ferritin, you're not getting the whole picture. So when iron serum is low and ferritin is high, iron is contraindicated again, because your body is going to store it. You likely have some hemochromatosis genes, though I'm not a doctor, I don't diagnose or treat disease. We often will see those. Um, on your genetics and your body is storing the iron, there is a mutation that is causing things to be stored when it shouldn't be. Now that is a definitely a different ballpark. Depending on how high your ferritin is, you might actually need to donate blood that will force the body to take the iron out of this uh, the ferritin and move it into the bloodstream and take it out of the stores because high ferritin levels can lead to cancer. 
iron is an oxidant. Now, men, we often see with high levels of iron, especially right now with everybody going keto and carnivore and they're increasing their meat. Well, their iron is going up into very toxic ranges. That stored iron can be 300, 400. I have seen it at 500. And guess what? A lot of doctors will not run ferritin as a standard lab and people are exponentially increasing their risk of cancer by eating this way and not checking their labs. Now for women, what happens is when we're bleeding, we lose blood every month, obviously, and we deplete our iron. So a lot of times, younger women who are cycling are going to have lower iron unless they have um, one or more hemochromatosis genes or they have an SHMT mutation and there is some iron dysregulation there. But usually with younger women, we're going to see low iron. And right now there's a big movement. People are cooking in cast iron pans and it's like, yeah, that might be good for younger women, but is definitely likely not good for your husband. Very rare are we going to see men with very low iron levels. We do see it though. I, I definitely see it now, especially with vegans or people who are putting their body into a state of constant breakdown on keto diets or sometimes even carnivore diets. They're losing so much weight because they're not giving their body their ideal fuel. They're causing so much inflammation that the body's like, whoa, we can't store this. Like we cannot hold on to this. So now I'm seeing men presenting with lower iron levels because of these extreme diets. It happens on like the candida diet. Also, it's a big one. Whenever you're depriving your body of fuel and you're putting yourself into a breakdown by not giving your body fuel and proper nutrients, then the body's going to be like, no, no, can't, can't store that. Um, so iron is a little bit of a complex topic. You definitely want to make sure you're getting your labs. Uh, you checking if your iron, if your ferritin is incredibly low and your iron serum is also low, that's definitely a time to go for an iron sucrose shot. And then after that shot, you are going to want to be doing iron supplements like iron bisglycinate or heme iron, but you're going to want to do the other work. Why can my body not hold on to this? And for some women, they have exceptionally heavy periods. And if that is you, then you need to work on why you have exceptionally heavy periods. Again, methylation plays a huge role. So does your detoxification of your hormones. I have a whole video on hormone balancing, so check that out. If you like this video, hit like and subscribe. And if you are looking for a practitioner, you wanna get the right labs, see what your root causes are, then go to my website, www.sgintegrativehealing.com.